Hey YouTubers, today I'm going to take this Lionel Crescent Limited Passenger Car with incandescent lights and I'm going to replace the lights with an LED strip and install passenger car entryway hi-hats. So we all know that incandescent light bulbs, they draw a lot of power and they create hot spots in passenger cars as we can see here. If we retrofit these cars with LED strips, the light is more uniform throughout the entire length of the passenger car. Now let's say we operate our cars at 14 volts AC. I measure this car would draw 0.22 amps and this one draws 0.06 amps. And that's a huge difference. If we go to the Transformers full throttle, which is like 20 volts AC, I measure this car at a quarter of an amp and this one still maintains the 0 0.060 amps. Also, when you fluctuate the uh, transformer at different voltages, the uh, luminosity changes into the passenger car. So um, what I did was in this passenger car, I added entryway hi-hat LEDs. So what does that mean? I know you're asking that. So you see the doors and the steps here? Whether if you do the retrofit with the LEDs or not, this area here is very dark inside. So if you're a passenger, you're walking up the stairs, you go into the passenger car, it's very dark on this side. So what I did was I found some micro LEDs, drilled a hole on top and attached it to the custom DC power supply into my LED lit passenger car so I, I, so I can illuminate these areas so, so passengers can see once they're getting into the cars. And I think it looks great, uh, adds a little more luminosity to the car as well as uh, aesthetics if you're driving by you see the light pouring onto the table from these entryways you know, onto your train table. So I'm going to do this for all my passenger cars so we can get started and take the car apart for the LED retrofit. To get the lids off these passenger cars, I don't see any screws present on the sides of these or on the bottom, so this lid must be clipped into place. If you look down the sides of the passenger car, and uh, if you look at the windows, there's two windows here that look like they are beveled outward like this. And those are the clips that are holding on the roof of the passenger car onto the main body. So um, there's one here, and there's one on the adjacent side. So we just take them, we squeeze them in, and then just kind of wiggle it like so some are going to be hard and some are going to be easy it depends how the car was put together and how well it's been made if you have a little trouble you could use your fingernails which I have some nails on me just to pry this off if you want you could use this flathead screwdriver with some painters tape on it to help pry it off but gently okay this one's not that bad there we go Okay, so these passenger car lids is a white opaque piece of plastic that's just painted green on top with a cardboard insert. Now this cardboard insert prevents the light from going through the plastic. If we were to take out this cardboard and shine a flashlight through the inside, any place where the paint is not built up is going to shine the light through. So we're going to have to take the inside of this where the cardboard is and we're going to have to paint it black so no light goes through, through the top of the passenger car. First we're going to trace the cardboard insert on the inside of the passenger car. Remove the cardboard insert. Tape up the interior of the passenger car up to the lines. Rough up the interior with Scotch-Brite. Dust off interior. Then paint the interior with two coats of enamel paint. All right. Weather changed outside, it got colder, so uh, sweater. All right, so the LEDs I have chosen for this project are from superbrightleds.com, and it's 16.4 feet of LED ribbon on this reel, and these LEDs are three LEDs per inch, and you can cut these in one inch segments. So I soldered on 26 gauge wire, I twisted them together so that they stay together, and once the ribbon was set in place, I took some hot glue, and I hot glued the wires onto the top of the lid of the passenger car. This way I'm not putting any kind of stress at the solder joint, but rather it's going to be on the wire itself. Okay, so for right now let's put the lid of the passenger car to the side for now. Now I'm going to focus on making the hi-hats for the passenger car. 
The LEDs that I've chosen for this project are from Amazon and are micro-sized LEDs and they come with three packs of resistors for varying voltages for your project. So I'm going to find the center of my passenger car entryway, drill out the appropriate hole for the LED, I'm going to hot glue the LED into place, followed by placing two layers of black electrical tape so that none of the light comes through the back of the LED into the passenger car lid, and I'm going to solder on the appropriate resistor for the LED. Now just before we solder everything together, we, we should discuss how bright you want your passenger cars to look. If we were to take the, this LED strip and connect it right to the DC power supply in your passenger cars, you, these LEDs will operate at their maximum brightness, which would make your passenger cars look really, really bright. Uh, but, uh, but we don't want that. Um, so we're going to need to put a series resistor in line with these LED strips to limit the voltage going to them. 9.5 volts was pretty okay to operate these LED strips for me. I liked them, so my resistor value that I calculated was 42 ohms. The first thing you're going to want to find is how much current your LEDs are going to draw. This diode with the two arrows coming out represents a symbol of an LED. And here's my power supply. My meter here is connected in series with my LEDs. And when the power is turned on at 12 volts, my LED strip draws 0.06 amps of current. Now this is an electronic diagram of the circuit inside of our passenger cars. We have our 12 volt DC power supply, our LED strip with our target voltage of 9.5 volts, and our mystery resistor that, that we have to figure out. Now the current in this series circuit is always constant at 0 0.06 amps, which uh, has to maintain that power to keep these LED strips you know, working. So we're going to go ahead and find out this resistor value, which is really easy. First we have our 12 volts. We're going to subtract that from 9.5 volts, and that equals two and a half volts DC on that resistor. Now being that we have our uh, series current, which is 0 0.06 amps, we can take the 2.5 volts, divide that into the 0 0.06 amps, and that's gonna equal 41.67 ohms but there's no such value of this. So we're gonna say it's 42 ohms of resistance. So if a 42 ohm resistor is not a standard value, we would have to get a 22 ohm and two tenths and put it in the space to give us the proper voltage drop on the LED strips. Now they do make a 47 ohm resistor. Let's see if we can plug it into the resistor value. And uh, this is going to change this value too. Okay, so we have 47 ohms. Let me separate this. 47 ohms times 0 0.06 amps equals. 2.82 volts across this resistor. And what would the voltage be on the LED strip? 12 volts minus 2.82 volts, and that'll equal 9.18 volts DC on that on the LED strip for our passenger cars. So between 9.18 and 9.5 volts is not much of a difference. You know, you probably would not even notice that. So um, you, you can use a 47 ohm resistor, experiment with other resistors just to see how bright you want your passenger cars to be or to make them how dim, however way you want it to go. For me, I had a variable DC power supply. I was able to control the voltage to a brightness that I liked, and I was able to calculate a series resistor to put in line with my LED strips. Now for you, you may not have a DC power supply uh, to play with the voltage and stuff to, be able to see the brightness that you want, but you do have the custom DC uh, supply that you made for your passenger cars. 
You can just take a wire, put it to a, the lock-on clip on your tracks, and you have 12 volts coming out of the power supply. You could put it to your transformer. That's another way you could power up these power supplies. Or for me, another way is that I had I had two 6-volt batteries from um, um, emergency lights. I connected in series. I got 12 volts out of here. So, I mean, you do have a lot of ways to make a 12-volt power supply. Um, so, Amazon also sells... Uh, a set of resistors that uh, you can order from them and I would recommend they get half watt resistors and you can play with different variables to see what kind of brightness you want for your passenger cars. I'm just going to solder my yellow AC input wires to my rectifier and hot glue the board to the bottom of the passenger car. So if you're happy with all of your calculations and the way that the LEDs look, we can finally put all of our wires together. Now all of my wires come together here or along with their resistors and they're soldered together inside of this heat shrink tubing. All of these wires are held on the floor of the passenger car with 3M double sided permanent adhesive tape. So this tape is very sticky and will not come up that easily. Any place where I extended wires and I couldn't get tape, I just had to glue the wires in place. And for the LED hi-hats on both sides, I just ran the wires down the wall of the passenger car here, soldered on the wires, extension wires, and I just taped them right down to the floor of the passenger car. Now, I wouldn't run the wires along the wall here of the passenger car because of this little valley. This valley right here is for the clip of the passenger car to sit into. If we were to run our wires along this corner and try and put our lid on, the lid is not going to sit all the way and there's a chance that you will damage the wires. Now over here where the wires go down the wall of the passenger car, uh, when you put the lid on, the corner of the lid of the passenger car is, is fit precision to sit inside this corner here. So what I would do is I would take a Dremel tool and just sand this corner off uh, ju just enough so that the wires for the LEDs would sit comfortably inside. So when you put the lid back onto the body of the passenger car, the wires will not get damaged. And now with everything in check, we can finally assemble the passenger car. So, if you installed the high hat LEDs, make sure that the wires are tucked into the corners of the passenger car. And hopefully with the areas that you shaved off on the side of the opaque lid, just make sure that channel is big enough so the wires can fit inside. So, as we put our lid on, just make sure nothing is pinching, nothing is happening. This is going in pretty smooth. And this is looking good so far. Now before we finalize and put the lid on in place, the wire that connects the LED to the top of the passenger car to your, to your power supply, you want to check out that it's not up against any of the windows. If this is the case and you close the lid up and then you put the car in the track, you're going to see the wire in the window. So with the lid just up and we look down through one of the doors, I can see the wire from the power supply to the lid. And it's kind of over a bit so I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver, stick it in through one of the windows. I'm just going to manipulate the wire enough so that it's out of the way. Perfect. Now we can finally close up the lid. There we go. Let's put on the track. Put it in place and turn on the power. There we go. One LED LED passenger car. Now I did this to all five passenger cars of the Crescent Limited set along with the additional dining car. Uh, for this set, so that's six cars. Uh, somebody told me that there were a total of 13 passenger cars in the Crescent Limited set, so I went out to eBay, bought a couple of Beauregard and Jackson Stonewall uh, passenger cars, and I made every passenger car LED lit. Um, there's two cars that I'm going to talk about as far as putting in LEDs. That's the, uh, the baggage car and the uh, observation car. The baggage car only has a couple small doors, so you're not going to give an entire strip of LED inside. So what I did with the LED reel that I have, uh, they, uh, they are cut in one inch segments. So I cut a two inch piece, I took a current reading, which I think was 0 0.0419 amps, and I want to give it my appropriate voltage drop uh, to what, what, whatever I want it to be. It didn't have to be that bright because it is a baggage car. And I think I, it came up to 92 ohms, so I just threw in a 100 ohm resistor and called it a day. Now the observation car was treated very differently. So I went ahead, I did the LED inside of the passenger car along with the hi-hat. 
on the back of the passenger car, it's kind of plain. So what I did to the back area of the roof, I installed two hi-hats along the gated area of the rear of the passenger car, and I installed two uh, O-scale marker lanterns. So shapeways.com has the O-scale marker lanterns, and Evan Designs has the um, nano size LEDs that I use for this project. These are the O scale marker lanterns from shapeways.com and you can see just how small they are compared to the size of my thumbnail. Now there's six in a package and they are attached here to this um, plastic base and you cut them off. Uh, I use my Dremel tool with a light cutting wheel or you could use a very light hacksaw and just cut them off just right below this ring which is part of the lantern and you see the stems out to the side, they get mounted onto your cars, cabooses, whatever it is that uh, you want it to do. To get the LEDs inside, this very small drill bit that I have with my Dremel kit, I just drilled into the bottom of the, uh, of the lantern, at least, at least up to the lenses, and I drilled in straight, and then I started to ream out the inside of the lantern, so I would have a space big enough to put the LED inside. Now the LED is very small. I just bent it upwards. I put it inside of the lantern and I just put uh, super glue in there just to keep it in place and just let it sit there. After that I just painted the outside black very carefully so it could cover up any of the red coming out of the lantern and just let the, the red light come out of the lenses of these scale marker lanterns. To mount the lanterns, I found a desired location on the observation car. I drilled a hole a little bigger than the studs on the lanterns, and I had to cut the resistor off the LEDs because, well, it wouldn't fit into the hole. So once I pushed the wire through and mounted the lantern, I used super glue to keep it in place, and then I reattached the uh, resistor to the LED and then I connected everything to my 12 volt power source. Now if your passenger car flickers, most likely that the wheels are dirty and possibly your track too. To clean my tracks, I saw some Australian guy advertise this, uh, I saw in the video, a product called Inox and it cleans the track very well. It gives it a, a, a nice protective barrier on the metal so that it'll help it prevent from rusting and stuff. Um, Proof of this, I used this on a switch track that was rusting. I clean off the rust and I use this stuff. And as far as I know, I haven't seen it rust since. Uh, to clean the passenger car wheels, I use my Dremel tool with a steel wire brush. Along with wearing eye protection, I clean off the wheels, I clean off the pickup contacts, and it made a great improvement into the car itself. So I clean up all the wheels on a lot of the cars. They don't flicker anymore, unless I got a dead spot on a switch track, which tends to happen. So, um, hopefully this video has been very informative to everybody. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section below. And thank you all for 200 uh, subscribers. I thank you all for subscribing to my channel. I hope I can keep giving you quality videos as you see here. So everybody, until next time, I'll see you later.